What's up, what's up, what's up? It's your man Chaz Ellis once again giving you the information that you asked me for. And one of the big questions that you guys have been asking me um, comes from the video. Um, why is it so hard to stop loving somebody, to stop so loving someone that doesn't want you? You know, I'd be forgetting. I've made a lot of videos. So. Why, is it, why is it hard to stop loving somebody who doesn't want you? It's going to be an annotation somewhere in here anyway. Click on that and watch that, please, before you watch this video. The reason why I did these videos separately is because you have to understand the problem first before you can really understand the solution to it. So watch the other video first. Otherwise, some of this stuff is going to seem like, what? Really? This nigga crazy. But if you watch the video, then it'll start making sense. Anyway. Okay, some of the stuff we talked about with dealing with I'm assuming that you paused the video if you didn't watch it already and now you watch this video and now you're watching this video so anyway some of the stuff we talked about about loving somebody that doesn't really want you and we talked we talked about the emotional roller coaster we talked about um how you may feel about them and they're not necessarily going on that emotional roller coaster we also talked about how when you when two people love each other and they break up they both care about each other. They kind of cancel each other out. And that's kind of a cure. So, basically, the way love unrequited works is kind of like a disease. I know, like, like a disease? Dang, I, ain't, I don't didn't think she burnt me. What, for real? No. It's like a disease, like a cold. You know? And the funny thing about a cold is your body actually knows what to do when you have a cold. And your body tries to heal you. You know, this is why you have certain symptoms. Like you get a runny nose, you cough a lot, um, sneezing and all that crap. Because your body is trying to heal you. Well, that's kind of how the emotional roller coaster works. Um, and how some of the things you're going through work. It, when, you, when you fall in love and you guys have a breakup or you're going through that situation is your body tries to heal you. That's why it takes you on that emotional roller coaster to get that stuff out. Um, but just like when you have a cold, you need to cough, you need to snot and all that nastiness. But let's be real. When you snotting and coughing and all that mess, nobody wants to be around somebody like that. Right? So because we know that stuff is nasty, what do we do? We take pills and medicine and stuff like that to try to suppress how we feel. We take um, cough suppressants. We take um, stuff to make our nose not run like that. We do those things, but they don't necessarily make us better, but they, keep, they make us presentable to the public. But they don't really heal us. Now, the ones of us who are smart... Um, the ones of us who are smart, we do it a little bit different. We might take some of that mess, or we may not. We may go, um, you know what? I'm not really gonna. I'm gonna let the. I'm just gonna let my cold run its course, and I'm gonna take some vitamin C, B12. I'm gonna get some rest, eat good food, um, take in some fluids, and I'm gonna feel better eventually. And you know, generally, you do feel better, and you feel better a lot faster. You know, some people, they just, have you ever seen somebody that had a cold for like three weeks? And you're like, damn, man, you know, we had the same cold for three weeks. And they keep taking pills, just popping pill after pill after pill. You're like, dude, you're not getting no better. That's how the love works. Because you got to let the disease run its course. That's the big thing. It has to run its course. And that's the first thing that you want to do is that when you want to heal yourself, you have to say, how do I get cured? Like a cold, take it from the same thought process that you would with a real disease. First thing you want to do is say, let the disease run its course, right? So you have to ride the emotional roller coaster. What does that mean? Now, remember when I was telling you about um, people take the cough suppressants and all that kind of stuff? So they don't look nasty and look crazy, right? And look out and be sneezing on people and all that kind of stuff when they sneezing and coughing and nose running. Well, you got to stop taking that. 
What I mean by that is you got to stop suppressing your emotions and your feelings because that's just going to keep it going longer. That's going to make you feel that way for even longer. For instance, some days you're going to wake up in the morning, you want to call that person and just go, I love you. I want to be with you. I care about you. Why are you treating me this way? Why you got to do a brother like this? I don't, why? But you don't want to seem crazy. So you don't do that. You suppress. So it stays inside. Or you might be mad one day. Like, man, I forget you. I'm tired of you doing me like this. What I'm saying is stay legal. Don't do anything that's illegal. Don't do anything that gets you in trouble. But what I'm saying is, and this is going to sound crazy to some people, but you got to hear it and you got to believe it. Let the emotions out. Go on the roller coaster. Ride that mug. What you need to do is when you feel that, like when you feel like I want to say something nice to the person, I want to call them up and I want to offer them a dozen donuts, call them. Hey, I want to bring you a dozen donuts. Yeah, I just feel thinking about you and want to bring you a dozen donuts. You know, want to make sure you had a good day. You're like, what? This person dissed me? I want to do that? Yes. And if they diss you and it pisses you off, go right ahead. Fuck you then. I ain't want to get you no donuts anyway. I hope you choke on whatever donuts you ever eat. Beast. That's the emotional roller coaster. Go on it. Stay legal. Like I said, stay legal. But go on the emotional roller coaster. You mad one day? You happy one day? Psh, go right on it. Let yourself go on there because I've said this before and I'll say it again. The leading unfinished business is the leading cause of obsession. Leading cause. When you don't feel like you said what you wanted to say, you don't feel like you you um, got all your emotions out, you feel like you left some stuff on the table, you didn't try hard enough, whatever the case may be, that's what causes you to become obsessed. Go on the emotional roller coaster. Say all the things you feel like you need to say. And when you do, it's going to start pouring that stuff out. Letting the disease run its course. Um, next, use your friends. Your friends are like orange juice. Or, you know, when you take in vitamin C. Um, they get you, they give you a little boost to make you feel better. They start helping your system to work better. You know, uh, helping your, um, they start helping your um, immune system to work a little bit better. <clears throat> Basically, your friends, you got somebody. Make sure you got good friends. And if you don't, get some good friends. When you start talking to your friends about what's going on in your life, and you start saying, hey, man, and they start giving you good advice and good, um, just letting you bounce stuff off of them, telling you, hey, man, let's go out and hang out for a second. Let's talk about this. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's talk about something else. Let's talk about some stuff that happened back in high school. Let's talk about, you know, just anything. Your friends kind of know what you need, and they can help you to start getting over that and pushing past it. Um, that's what you use your friends for. Use them like OJ, not like the killer, like the drink. Use, use them like the OJ, you know what I mean? Get yourself together. Um, next, use your hobbies. Your hobbies are like um, that rest and relaxation that you need when you got a cold. You know, when you got a cold and you just keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, going forward, doing work all day long, you don't get any sleep, you just get worse. You get sicker and sicker and sicker. Well, that's kind of like that when you sit in the house and think about just what happened with this person and all that kind of crap. It's like your brain boiling in its own juices. You get sadder and sadder and sadder. You feel more and more upset. You don't really feel like you can get over it. You feel like you, you become consumed with it, consumed with the pain. So get out. Use your hobbies to be like a rest so you can recharge your battery and fight this mess off. Um, the opposite sex. The opposite sex works like a, sh a shot of B12. Go get around some people that you know are going to give you compliments. Go get around some people that you know are going to show you a good time. Go get around some people that you know are going to make you feel like you're getting the victories and getting wins. Um, because I'm not saying go get a rebound or whatever, but I'm saying be around people that you know like you. You've, you've been around somebody who doesn't want you, and look how that makes you feel. Go be around people who do want you. It's not going to be a permanent solution, but it's going to be a shot in the arm. It's going to make you feel a little bit better. You're going to get to where you got to you put a smile on your face for a second. You can deal with this a little bit more because now you're saying, you know what? 
you don't like me, but that ain't necessarily the case with everybody. Okay, we have established you think I'm ugly or whatever, or you think that I'm stupid or whatever you think, whatever the hell it is you think. We've established that, but that ain't everybody. And this, and the fact that I'm talking to these people proves it. Um, now, this one is going to sound kind of crazy to you, but works like a charm. Um, you can't do this with a cold, but love is a totally different disease. Um, or unrequited love is a totally different disease. Um, you can pass it on for a while. You can pass on the symptoms, the frustration, the anger. Um, you can kind of pass it on. It's, you can transfer that negative energy. So, here's, remember when we were talking about the emotional roller coaster? Some days you're going to wake up and you're going to be frustrated, you're going to be sad, you're going to be upset at all the stuff that's been going on in your life, right? You're going to be pissed at what's going on with this person. Now, the person that you've become in life and what life has taught you is going to tell you to sink that down into your gut and let it fester and get pissed off, angry and upset and take that out on people around you because it's going to have to go somewhere. So you're going to push it down for as long as you can and you're going to take it out on your friends, you're going to take it out on your family, you're probably going to take it out on your kids, you know, whoever. And then you're going to take allies that actually like you and push them away. Why? You already have somebody that you don't really like and doesn't like you. Well, you may still like them, but they damn sure don't like you. Otherwise, we wouldn't be talking about this. You, there's already somebody like that in the world, right? So what does it hurt you to call them and just talk shit? Stay legal. Stay legal. But what does it hurt you to call that person? And you don't even got to talk about your relationship or anything like that. But just call them and talk shit. Just call them and like, just say some stuff. Just totally out of nowhere. They're just kind of like point at them and just pick them, pick at them a little bit and piss them off. Make sure they're not violent either. If they're violent, you probably don't want to do this. But kind of jab them a little. And when you do, they're going to get pissed most likely. And then when they get pissed and like when you hit a nerve and they get pissed and want to come back at you, hang up. <laughs> like, completely hang up. If they text you, just erase it. Don't even read it. If they um, Facebook you or whatever, they, whatever method they go through to try to talk to your ass, don't read it. Don't give, don't, because what you just did was you pushed it back onto them. All that you were feeling, you just dumped on them. Now you're going to feel light and free. And as long as they'll entertain you, you can keep doing it. So basically, if you have a bad day, toss it right on them. And what they'll do, as long as they keep entertaining it, it's all good for you. Because basically what you're doing is you're spitting out all that venom and anger right on top of them. So they they want to try to spit it back on you, but you won't talk to them. You basically just flip roles for a second. It doesn't work permanently, but it'll get you through some rough times. Um, so after you've done that, you're probably like, well, what's the end game of that? When you've done those things, when you've let you when you've just been letting it run its course. When you um using your friends to, to give you a little bit of help, using other people to give you a little bit of help, to give you that shot in the arm, when you're um passing it on to them sometimes. When you do those things, here's the end game. One of three things is gonna happen. One of three things is gonna happen, definitely. Here's what's gonna happen. They either go on the emotional roller coaster, not because they like you so much, but just because you're just pissing them off. And you take them on that emotional roller coaster with you. Now they're going to start cussing you out one day, being happy the next. When they go on that emotional roller coaster, what happens? Just like any other relationship, cancel each other out. So now you don't have to deal with it anymore. Or you just get it all out of your system. If you just keep going up, down, up, down, up, you get tired. You get it, it, you don't have anything else to say. You get to the point where you're like, you know what? I just don't care anymore. I've done I've done and said everything I wanted to say. I've tried everything I could possibly try. I don't really care. Like, I legitimately don't care. Or, they leave you alone completely. Because they get tired of the shit you're doing. And they leave you alone completely. What does that do for you? That gives you the ability to heal. Sometimes the worst thing a person can do to you when you're trying to get over them is be nice. Or be even. 
sometimes it's the worst thing you can do because it just keeps you wanting to keep coming back. What your brain will do is when it sees the door is completely closed and shut in your face, is it'll try to find something else. It'll be like, okay, this is over. So when you get that, when they close that door and give you no choice but to move on, they're doing you a favor. One of those things is going to happen if you go and if you take this path. Because they're not going to continue to be even killed and keep dealing with somebody who's acting the way you are going on an emotional roller coaster. Not possible. Nobody can do that. Um, so they're going to have to do one of those things. They're either going to get sucked into it with you and get emotional, which means you, you cancel each other out. You're good. Or they're going to um, they're going to let you get it all out because they're going to keep entertaining your foolishness until you finally just pff, don't care anymore. And you're like, yeah, hey, I'm good. Or they're going to stop talking to you. And when they stop talking to you, eventually you're going to stop caring because there's nothing fueling your fire. So hopefully I was able to help you out. Once again, it's your man Chaz Ellis. Look, for me to keep doing these videos, I need you guys to support me. All right? Make sure you go to Indiegogo and support as Chaz Ellis presents the game plan. Even if you don't necessarily... What, you're not necessarily interested or interested in that dating class. Make sure you support it anyway because it's going to keep other classes going and it keeps these videos going. Then, when you want it, when it's a class that you are really interested in, you'll be able to be a part of that. This keeps it going. Please make sure you support that because, like I said, it keeps me being able to do these videos, keeps me being able to do what I'm doing to help you guys out, and that's exactly what I want to do. Um, also, make sure you go to Ask Chaz Ellis on Facebook and the ChazEllisProject.com, and just check me out on there too. Make sure you like and subscribe and share this video also, because I know it's some people that need it. Make sure you do that. Once again, it's your man Chaz Ellis. Peace.